Hi guys, it's time for a flip classroom discussion. This is AP Art History. I'm Mr. Bruns, and today we're going to begin uh, early medieval art, and this will be one of several uh, video classroom lectures at this time period. Uh, our objective throughout these time throughout these videos is that you should be able to identify the characteristic of early medieval art, identify art at the court of Charlemagne, and identify the characteristics of Etonian art. And for this video purposes, we're going to be view, looking at the characteristics of early medieval art, and we'll follow with other videos for Charlemagne and Etonian art. These are our time periods in chronological order, Hiberno-Saxon, Viking art, Carolingian art, and Etonian art. So we're going to be discussing Hiberno-Saxon, or also known as animal style art, to begin with. So let's do. Let's talk a little bit about some historical background. Um, all the things that the Romans had built up to in the art and architecture and their culture had been lost. It was lost in history, and Europe um, is under chaos. It's an age that's epitomized by Attila the Hun and the dramatic tribes of the time. Um, the Vikings from the Scandinavia and their speedy boats and their attacks and invasions on the British Isles and other groups like the notorious Vandals uh, that did much to destroy the remains of the Roman civilization. And so historians would say that Europe goes into a dark age, a term that more reflects our knowledge of the times than the times themselves. However, stability in Europe was reached at the end of the 8th century when a group of Frankish kings, most notably under Charles the Great, began to build an oppressive empire uh, whose capital was at Aachen, Germany. We also need to know during this time period that monasteries were our principal centers of learning in an age when even the emperor, particularly Charlemagne for example, were illiterate couldn't write more than his name, and therefore artists could both write and draw were particularly prized at the time. They're most known for um, their creation of beautifully decorated manuscript books, also known as his codices, C-O-D-I-C-E-S, which were improvements over ancient scrolls, both for the ease of use and durability, a codex, was more of resilient antelope or calf hide called vellum or sheep or goat hide which was known as parchment and those are things that you need to know for art history when it comes to knowing the medium of some of the things that we're looking at. Illustrations were painted mostly by monks and nuns who wrote in rooms called scriptoria or writing places that had no heat, very little light, uh, those were designed because they wanted to prevent fires. Vows of silence were maintained to limit any type of mistake, and a team often worked on one book. Scribes copied the text, illustrators drew capital letters as painters illustrated scenes from the Bible. Eventually, um, the, the, squi the, the choirs were sewn together uh, to create the book, and manuscript books had a sacred quality behind them. This was God's word and had to be treated with uh, appropriate uh, deference to it. We're going to talk about Hiberno-Saxon. We need to know some characteristics of Hiberno-Saxon. Uh, it's art that refers to the British Isles in the middle, uh, early medieval period. Hibernia is an ancient name for Ireland. The main artistic expression is illuminated manuscripts, of which a particularly rich collection still survives. Hiberner Saxon relies on complicated interlacing patterns in a frenzy known as the Horror of Akiai. Uh, the borders of these pages uh, have animals in stylized uh, combat patterns, sometimes called the animal style, and that's why we sometimes refer to Hiberno-Saxon art as animal style art, because you'll see this sort of interlacing of animals, uh, more like snake bodies, interlacing with each other with some sort of a bird head. Well, let's look at some examples of Hiberno-Saxon. Uh, first of all, we want to look at this work. This is the purse cover that was recovered from the Sutton Hoo burial ship. This was right around 600 to 650 CE. Uh, its medium is gold, garnet, enamels, and other semi-precious stones. The Sutton Hoo was the scene of a ship burial, possibly for a king. Uh, the purse cover design survived. The leather um, bag did not. 
uh, backing of ivory or a bone had disintegrated and again the bag was made of leather. It is animal style because we have uh, you could see the images of animal in the pattern but we have somewhere in here we have hawks attacking ducks we have animals biting the heads of the men that flank them and if you look at those animals it's going to remind you of the Sumerian um, Lear box uh, art design too we see the interlacing patterns of ornamental designs the legs and the arms are intertwined and the cloison c-l-o-i-s-o-n-n-e E technique and that's uh, a term you need to know and search in your textbook. Here's another example of Hiberno-Saxon art. This is St. Matthew from the Book of Lindisfarne. This is uh, done right around 700 CE. It is tempera on vellum. Uh, we have St. Matthew is seated on a cushioned bench, book on his lap, and he's writing uh, his book of the Bible. There's a man behind the curtain, maybe an inspiration from God, maybe it's Moses, or maybe it's Christ. We really don't know. But that's where Matthew is getting his inspiration. Matthew's symbolic angel is above him. Latin words, image of a man, is seen coming out above uh, his symbol. We see some Byzantine influence in this work. We see the Greek words, Saint Matthew, the angel's hand uh, covered. We see a very flattened uh, work here, linear elements. We do see some soft modeling of Byzantine art that turned into very crisp, cusp-shaped like uh, lines in the St. Matthew's drapery. And he's got good molding here. The stage is very shallow. We see some foreshortening as the image is kind of tipped up towards us. And we've got this really nice framing around Matthew. And we kind of feel like as we look through the frame, we are actually looking through a window and we're witnessing Matthew write uh, his book for the Bible. This was painted and inscribed by Bishop uh, Adfrith of Lindus Farn. Another great example of Hiberno Saxon is the Chiro Iota page. This is from the Book of Kells. Uh, this was done right around 800. It is ink on vellum. Um, this is really a beautiful work of, uh, of art. It's lavish, it's richly illustrated with great complexity in its design. You see the interlacing patterns that dominate the, the, the page. Heads and figures of people appear within the elaborate patterning. If you look at the bottom of the chi, uh, towards the bottom curved, you'll see two cats uh, looking at two mice that are trying to eat a wafer at the bottom. Um, and that is very symbolic of Christianity as the, the mice represent evil and the wafer represents the body of Christ and the cats are there to kill the mice. Um, initials are dominant motifs pushing everything else to the margins of the page. So again today's uh, discussion was about the characteristics of early medieval art. We looked at the Chi Rho Iota page from the book of Matthew uh, in the book of Kells. We also examined the St. Matthews from the book of Lindisfarne and we looked at the purse cover from the Sutton Who Ship Burial. We discussed horror vacchiae and the animal style which are characteristics of Hiberno-Saxon art. Thanks for listening.